David Davis. Madam Deputy Speaker, can I start by uh, sending my wishes to everybody else's to the, uh, the Security Minister. I sp uh, the House would perhaps like to know. I spoke to him today, this afternoon, and he is making very good progress. Oh, yeah, so uh, yeah. uh, we're all happy about that. Can I also commend in the strongest possible terms uh, the Honourable Lady for Walsamster and the campaign she had put together uh, on this, particularly with respect to uh, uh, this bill as it applies to children. Uh, she has proved uh, yet again a formidable campaigner for which we should all be grateful. Now let me say to the House that I am still completely against the division between children above and below the age of 16, whether or not, uh, in whether or not there is an absolute requirement for an appropriate adult at meetings with the child. Of course we all know 17 year olds who are very mature, but we also all know 17 year olds who are very immature. And in the context of uh, being involved in a criminal investigation, I suspect the latter are far more common than the former. Uh, and so for that reason, um, I think it entirely wrong that a police officer or officers, no matter how responsible, should be allowed, even in exceptional circumstances, to make judgments of whether that appropriate adult should be present. Nevertheless, that being said, this bill has made significant movements in the right direction, just, I think, not far enough. The, uh, the SNP spokesman who spoke a few moments ago raised the, the more general question of the extent of uh, the sort of crime that uh, Chizzes could be uh, approved to authorise. And since the Lords dropped uh, the amendments that relate to this, that ambiguity still applies to this bill, namely the sheer scope of crimes where they could include torture and murder uh, and the like. Now, this ambiguity arises because of the following. On the one hand, the government has said that hu the Human Rights Act intervenes to limit what can be done. And I quote Baroness Williams in the Lord's Hansard. And she said, the Human Rights Act provide limits to the conduct that can be authorised. An authorisation that's not compatible with the Human Rights Act will not be lawful. But in the court case that actually precipitated this bill, um, that of Privacy International versus the Home Secretary. On the 7th of May 2019, Mr James Eady, the government's QC, said that the state, and I quote again, in tasking the Chiz is not the instigator of that activity and cannot be treated as somehow responsible for it. It would be unreal to hold the state responsible. What I've always viewed as a rather Pontius Pilate statement by the government's uh, lawyer on this matter. Now that introduces an ambiguity. And the minister on the bench, uh, an old friend of mine, will understand better than most um, the standing of what he says since the Pepper v. Hart uh, case of some years ago, which namely uh, uh, the courts will interpret ambiguous legislation in the light of the way the minister describes it. So I would actually ask the minister to confirm in unequivocal terms for Pepper v. Hart purposes, the authorisation of acts that would breach the Human Rights Act would always be unlawful. I, I'll give way to him now, or he can answer when he winds up. I, I really don't mind. At the end, that's fine. I, I'll say one last thing with respect to that, and it's this. Uh, if the government doesn't make it clear, and that still hangs as an ambiguity around this bill, then this bill, along with the Overseas Offences Bill, could well end up with this country being an international criminal court for reasons that it did not intend to happen in the first, uh, this House did not intend to happen. And so it's that important that he makes this clear.